Why a summit for art and politics? So we've been doing this summit for some time in New York City. And something to think about, you know, it's, it's interesting because things have changed. And sometimes I think uh, that adage, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it, certainly holds true for the field of socially engaged art to some degree. But to go back in time, I would like to just say that when we first started with the summit, um, there was a task at hand. And I would say that task was called legitimation. And, and legitimation for a certain kind of artist that we in the room may be all familiar with, we may be them, who kind of produced a way of making culture that was dealing with the political life, public spaces, that didn't necessarily fit super comfortably with the museological, the museum world or the gallery world, was complex, sometimes very collaborative, sometimes questioning authorship, deeply invested in social change, wrestling with the complexities of political life, the difficulties of poetics and social action, concerns about instrumentality, all of these things that, you know, us in political art land are familiar with. But at the same time, at the time when we started the summit, it was not representative in a lot of the museums and galleries that we saw. At the same time in my life, I saw it everywhere I went. So where is this world? The, my friend and writer Greg Shillette calls it dark matter. You know, those of us that on the periphery, you know, not that, like, look at me, I'm from New York, white guy on the periphery, I get it. I'm not exactly peripheral representative. But the kind of practices of the periphery that um, were not being represented in the kind of center of the art world. And so the summit, in a sense, was to kind of make a platform for this way of working. And to do that was to basically say, we outnumber you. <laughs> But that idea that we outnumber you is also probably an analogy for politics writ large, right? I mean, I think in some ways global warming couldn't be a, the best metaphor for the world we're in where everybody agrees it's happening and everybody believes we should stop it and nothing's stopping. But we do outnumber. And in some ways, socially engaged art as a practice, using culture to make politics is a global phenomena and language. Perhaps... The avant-garde of the early 20th century won, unbeknownst to us. And in fact, the use of culture to produce politics is the actual operation of politics as it is. And in some ways, the summit, when it first began, was just simply a way to say, we are here. And so we took famous people from the art world, because that's how you get the art world to pay attention. So there we got Tomas Hirschhorn standing up there. And we take Oak Wienwiser and phenomenal people, Alfredo Yar, people that were known as important artists, and then we put them alongside anarchists, anti-authoritarians, people that don't believe in artist authorship, and give them the same amount of time, and said, these are equal players. And this is manipulating social capital. And it worked, in so much as we gave a beautiful design. I know also, this summit's all about time. We got a clock here. I've just gone four minutes, two seconds. We're all about staying on time. I'll tell you why, too. I've been to enough art and politics thing where people just go overtime forever. I'm like, come on, I want to get out of here. So I'm all about staying on time on this thing. But also, um, one of the, imp <laughs> but the important thing, too, with, this, uh, with the summit was that in many ways with art and politics, one of the things you notice happens is any individual project, when it comes to critiquing them, we, we put all our political concerns on them. We put gender, race, political economy, geopolitics, socialism, anarchism, revolution, intimacy, poetics, didactics, one project. It's a lot to bear for any individual artwork. So instead, throughout the day, you will see what I think of as an ecosystem of projects, 10-minute presentations from people from visual arts, performing arts, activism, governmental issues, but a different approaches so that we begin to see an ecosystem of methodologies that we can contextualize individual practices so that you can appreciate sometimes artworks are about the intimate and the poetic and sometimes artworks are straight up activist and didactic and that you understand there's room in our hearts for a myriad of approaches and that even in our own individual approaches we are operating in a global ecosystem of cultural production towards social justice and I think it's important to bear that in mind so this is some examples from our first summit, people presenting. Uh, the guys below, 
That's Baltimore Development Cooperative, and that's Oakley was there above. These people have very different amounts of power. <laughs> but power is not a, I joke about it, but power is actually the imp an important aesthetic political component in the summit itself. We're trying to leverage power as we work. On that note, this, art, this conference, and creative time in general, dances and plays with and works with and at times fights with that international phenomenon that is close to my heart and my friends and my family, and that is the art and activism community. And that community, which you may consider yourself a part of or not, is deeply skeptical of power, frankly, reasonably so. Not so long ago in New York was Occupy Wall Street, there was the Arab Spring, there was the European Summer, there's currently Occupy Hong Kong. But all of us, and many in your, this room, understand that it is, power is something to be skeptical of. And those of you that do have power, whether you're from government, business, or whatever, must understand that you should be skeptical of your own power. At the same time, it is important, part of the summit's trajectory, and the why, reason we're actually doing this in the culture of said is I, phenomenally I realized Sweden is amazing because it geographically represents power. The power is in the middle, the suburbs has less power. The middle is white, the suburbs are, have communities of color. It's like you can use geographic analogies and be accurate about the displays of power here. It's very useful. Um, but it's important that the summit's in the center. I know that many think, oh, why don't you do the summit at the periphery? But the summit is about operating in the center, but also being very conscious of power. Does that make sense? Because I think sometimes us in activist land have been really good at critiquing power, but we need to build as well. We need a language of building while simultaneously critiquing dominant narratives of power. We did a show called Living as Form, and this project was in many ways an opportunity to look at the surplus cultural production of the world. Socially engaged art and the summit itself is not meant to be a who's the best in the world Academy Awards thing, though we do have music that makes you go off the stage. This is meant to be a world of surplus, that we are a mass community, that we are supposed to network and work together to produce situations of social justice and that is not a small task, but at the same time, it is a courageous and important task that challenges very basic notions in the art world. The artistic genius, scarcity, commodity culture, all this stuff that is at the heart of the political economy of the arts is antithetical often to the stuff that makes us a rich political community. And I think that's where our ethos is at. Oh, I'm almost out of time, I'm so excited. Um, We've worked on a myriad of projects that try to address important political uh, subject matter. I'll be talking later today with Jeremy Deller about this project where he took a car blown up from Baghdad across the United States with a soldier from a uh, U.S. soldier and a citizen of Iraq. Uh, this is a project with Paul Chan we did in New Orleans. I'm just giving a... Um, this is the project we worked with the Queens Museum with, um, by the artist Tanya Bruguera, who will be here, called Immigrant Movement International. Um, Wait, hold on. Amit Oga, you guys all know Amit, right? He's been around here partying with you guys for a while over at Tensta. Um, this is what I wanted to just say at the end. So here you guys, here we are in your city, and there's your suburbs and your center. I think the important thing to think about as we talk about this summit, the thing we're going future, into the future with the summit is, is about bringing power questioning power at the center of power. And that isn't just like in, literally in the geographic centers of the cities, but also within the dominant narrative of where power is produced, that we actually outnumber those that are at the center. We have our own cultural production. We have our own ways of producing a narrative that legitimates and corroborates our narratives of what social justice is. It's a narrative that works with culture as well as social justice. It's a narrative that operates in space and in communities. It is a global narrative. And thanks for being here. Bye-bye. <laughs>